everyone. It's Tom Cadigan, and I'd like to welcome you to our December edition of What's New with O2, the video series that aims to spread the O2 love in celebration of our 20th, 20th reunion year. And this month, we're joined by Boston's own Justin Holmes, the head of marketing and public policy at Zipcar, and he's also a valued member of our O2 family. Welcome, Justin, and thanks for saying yes to this. It's great to catch up. Of course. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So how are things? What's uh, what's on your plate these days? Things are great. Yeah, uh, I'm living in South Boston, Massachusetts, a stone's throw from where I grew up in Dorchester. So maybe I haven't made it all that far. Um, well, it's full circle. It's called full circle. <laughs> full circle. I'll take it. Um, yeah, life is good. Uh, things at Zipcar are good. We can chat about that for a minute. Uh, you and I were talking a little bit before we hit the record button. I had some great news. This summer, my husband and I got married after being together for 10 years, so excited to have an opportunity and excuse to celebrate a little bit during the pandemic, albeit in a much smaller and safer way than we would have liked. Um, but yeah, life is good. Things, uh, things couldn't be better. Congratulations. I mean, Thank you. Definitely, definitely during the pandemic, it's always it's always good to be looking for something positive. So, you know, that that is very positive. So congrats. Yeah, after surviving nine years together and nine months of quarantine, Tom, we've decided, you know, it's probably time to make it for real. Now's the time. <laughs> it's official. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. And and you um you've got a neat job at at Zipcar, which you know, when we were students, there was no such thing as as Zipcar. There was not. Um, now it's right on campus. <laughs> yes. So how how did you get connected yeah. to that company? How has your experience been? And you know, I guess I would add on that, did you ever see yourself in a career like this? Because it's kind of neat things that you're doing. Yeah, not necessarily. I mean, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up, when I grew up and I probably still don't. Um, but I found my way to Zipcar. I'd spent probably about a decade or so in and around like Boston and politics. I had the Great fortune of working for a couple of great mayors, including Tom Menino, who was my mentor um, in Boston. And what he really taught me, which is actually quite similar to the values that we learned at Holy Cross, was that government was about helping people, that our jobs were to sort of make life better for the people that we served. And you know, not unlike my Holy Cross education, that kind of curses you for life um, in a lot of ways. And so when I was looking to move on from City Hall after Tom Menino left office, I stuck around for a little while, but wanted to really get my feet wet in a more corporate environment. And so was looking around for, for jobs and for roles and for companies that actually did good for the world. So that actually not only you know made money and made a profit, but had a more broader social purpose. And I was very lucky to find Zipcar right in our own backyard in Boston. Our headquarters is in Four Point, so about a 15 minute walk from where I live, which I'm fairly lucky about. We were founded in Cambridge uh, 21 years ago, as you mentioned. Um, and found my way over there, um, again, to, to contribute to work for a company that has a, a bigger, broader social purpose. And ours is to try to make it easier for people who live in cities to live without a need for a car and has a ton of social and environmental benefits that come along with it. Uh, so yeah, it's been, a, it's been a fun ride, as we say. Um, at Zipcar, for sure, I started seven years ago in a job that was more focused on working with government and doing a little bit of PR and communications and now find myself uh, running all of marketing and sales and addition to all that other stuff. Um, so yeah, it's been a, it's been a great ride. It's been a great growth opportunity for me. It, it's a par, and I think I've made a contribution or two along the way. That's awesome. Well, if you walk out of the Hogan Campus Center on your way up the hill, you'll see yeah. the parking spots for I think it's three zip cars at, at Holy yeah. Cross. So you, yeah. you, you've left your footprint on Mount St. James. Yeah, I guess so. Thanks. Yeah. Last time I was up there, I took a photo with the cars. It's a little bit of a proud moment. So yeah, it's uh, it's great. And I hope the students are getting good use out of them. I hope they're getting good and safe use out of them too. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Well, since we're on the topic of Holy Cross, like, so you were a political science major. Sure was. Um, you participated, I believe, in the Washington semester program, which... I learned is celebrating its 50th year this year. Oh my gosh. So you're, you're part of an esteemed cohort. Um, and you were involved in a lot of student organizations on, on yeah. campus. So, you know, a question I have is, you know, who are some of the, the mentors or the people that you looked up to, whether they were in the classroom, whether they were administrators on campus, or even, you know, peers 
who were roughly your age. So who were who, who are some of the folks you looked up to? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the wonderful part of uh, being part of the Hawaii Press community is there were mentors really everywhere, Tom. Like, you know, from my classmates, um, uh, from, you know, just as you said, like faculty and from administrators. You know, I, I was lucky in political science to have some really great uh, professors, you know, Vicki Langor, or Thomas, um, even David Schaefer, who he and I could not be more politically misaligned, um, but, you know, tolerated a lot of um, furious debate and what became like an intro sort of seminar class on political philosophy that was super fun. Um, so it really sharpened my political debate skills, uh, I guess. Um, so they were great mentors for sure. But, you know, probably the name that sticks out most to me is, is Art Corndonis, uh, of all people. Art uh, ran, in, in my days of Boy Cross, all ancillary stuff. Uh, so he ran the college bookstore and he ran um, dining services. Um, and Art, I, you know, I know he retired recently. Uh, and Art and I stayed in touch for a while. Um, you know, I, what was so great about him um, was that he was such a patient sort of thought partner as we were trying to do a lot of student organizing. And for those of you that might remember, you know, we were fighting a lot to make sure, you know, stuff sold in a bookstore wasn't manufactured under sweatshop conditions. And we were kind of like crazy students that were, you know, had this cause and had this mission. Um, and art could not have been like a more thoughtful and patient partner. And, you know, when I know he had a daily job to do that didn't have a lot to do with educating students that had a lot to do with making sure we were fed and we had the services that we needed. But you know, he stood out as someone who, you know, in like true Holy Cross fashion was just like a genuinely good person who was there to help other people, um, including us uh, students. So yeah, it was, it was great. And, you know, uh, just a reminder that, you know, like that kind of like mentorship comes in all sorts of forms, whether you're at Holy Cross as a professor or, you know, an administrator or, you know, even someone behind the scenes, like making sure that a lot of student services are enabled. So, yeah. No, I, I really got to know art when I came back to work at the college, and 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 you're, you're you're definitely right. I mean, he he kind of embodied that that spirit of someone who um, really cared yeah. about the community. Like he really it, it didn't matter if it was a big swanky event for the board of trustees or right. if it was yeah. you know something that affected um, you know a segment of the students. I mean, he really really cared about the community. Um, you know, we would definitely miss him since, since his retirement. That's, that's for sure. Um, um, you know, you, you, you touched on kind of dining services and this is more of a fun, this is more of a fun question Wait. since, you know, we are in the holiday season. Um, you know, did you have a favorite Kimball meal? Um, or I will then counter a, a least favorite Kimball mm. meal. Um, the pros Gosh, or the cons? I think this comes as a function of age, Tom, like it was 20 years ago, so I don't remember every meal. I remember really liking what I think I called at the time like chicken footballs, which oh, were really yeah. like yes. you know, the little like chicken cordon bleu things yeah. that came in like a deep fried package. Yeah. Uh, they were you puncture pretty, that you know, and kind of yeah, exactly. Out. And be careful where you puncture because you might get, you yes. know, a face yes. full of um, yes chicken stuff uh, coming in, in your direction. But yeah, no, uh, I do, like that was a standout. I don't remember food that I didn't like. I remember working in Kimball like freshman year and I remember not not loving the smell of all the food that was coming back on the back end. Uh, I still, you know, I, I still have visions of that smell, Justin, being a- I know, I mean, this is Holy Cross adjacent, but it did remind me when you mentioned food that, you know, probably a standout like food memory was more Roadrunner pizza at like- Roadrunner you know, pizza. pizza, oh, definitely. I mean, not only like, you know, a nice barbecue chicken pizza, but chili pepper cheese balls, which are nothing but like little fried fat pills. Um, at you know one or two in the morning or so uh, delivery that was uh, also a standout Holy Cross food in the spring, so. Definitely, and then the the delivery people would get in the dorms, and then every single room would have the flyer yeah. for the dorm. <laughs> I remember that. Yep. Roadrunner, sure. road that, that, That's <laughs> excellent. That's excellent. Well, I'll close on this, and this is a question that I that, that I like to ask all of our, our <clears throat> classmates who who are doing this is. You know, even after 20 something years, and it's still crazy to even think that. So even after 20 years, what goes through your mind when you hear the words Holy Cross? Um, 
what 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 is kind of stirred in you when you when you hear those words? Yeah, it's a, it's a great fun question, and this probably won't come as a great surprise for someone who is our Spud co-chair. Um, but the words community and service are the first that sort of come to mind, and you know, community to me, like you know, Holy Cross was such like a strong community when we were on campus, and even now, right? Like um, you know, I wish I was stayed in even more touch with my classmates. Like I see a bunch of people pretty frequently, um, but as the years go by, it's just harder to, to stay in touch. Um, but being part of this network, being part of this community, uh, I still think even 20 years from, uh, uh, from the time we left um, uh, the Hill, I think still like has this incredibly um, strong community, this incredibly strong network um, that I think is really important. And it, and it taught you, too, not just like you know the importance and the value of the Holy Cross community, but our role in the world community, right? Like our world and our obligation, um, you know, to give back and to do better. And that's where service, in my mind, um, comes in. You know, I mean, we were uh, I kind of joked earlier, like ruined for life in a lot of ways. Um, you know, with this mission of men and women for others and trying to do good for you know the world wherever in whatever context um, we live in. Um, and that I think is such an intangibly important part of uh, our Holy Cross experience, that, that value of um, doing right for the world, that value of men and women for others that, you know, I think I carry with me every day in, in my job now at Zipcar, um, you know, and how I interact with you know, my employees, with our team, um, and how I interact with the world. Um, so yeah, community service is probably the thing that comes to mind, and like doing volunteer work and doing all that other stuff that we used to do at Zipcar. Well, Justin, thank you so much for 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 doing this for being with us today and, and i mean this our our class the great class of o2 is is definitely blessed to have you as as one of its own so it was well that's kind and the, the same is true for you tom i know you're doing a series of monthly videos and i hope at some point one of us gets to, to flip the script and interview you as well given that you're just reminded me that i think you said you're spent now 18 years, 18 years. Uh, yeah, on crazy. campus so yeah. I can't wait to hear a little bit more about all the insights uh, that you have to share with us when we're back on campus. Well, I'm looking forward to this June for reunion. So, um, and, and, and I want to thank all of you for, for, for watching this and be on the lookout for more of these conversations in the new year. We're hoping to drop more episodes on the second of every month through June. Um, and in the meantime, best wishes for a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. Be well, everyone. Thank you.